Here we have a Dell Inspiron 7306 laptop that came in for no power. The customer said the computer will not turn on unless it has been charging for a long period of time. And there's an issue with the stylus pen with the laptop. There's also a problem with the screen where there's a red, green, blue, white flashing when I turn it on. I believe that's the diagnostic mode where the Dell laptop flashes colors on the screen. I think that happens when you press the D key on the laptop. As far as the stylus, I do not know what's going on, but we're going to look and see why the laptop is not powering on or why after a long period of charging, it powers on. The first thing I want to do is check on the USB-C connector because this laptop powers on via USB-C. We see a lot of issue with USB-C connectors on all devices. Sometimes if data lines are not making a connection, then you can get issues with charging or power. Or sometimes even like Spectre laptops, HP Spectre laptops, the connector just pulls off the board completely and rips the pad or the pads under it. So I'm looking, look at this. Same thing. Same as HP laptops. Look at this. The first touch on that connector. Look at what I see. And I can already tell we have a red pad right over here. Just first touch. We figured out the problem in one and a half seconds. And there's this bridge here that we need to desolder from the back in order to remove this connector. If we flip the board, take a look from the bottom. So the pin or the connector is soldered from the front, SMD, surface mount, and through hole. Let's start. If we do not start, we're not going to finish. We cannot just keep looking at the board and thinking. What's going on with this connector? It will take time to remove this connector. What if there are a lot of rip pads under the connector? What if the connector itself is bad and we cannot reuse it? And a lot of questions pop up in your head. But you have to start. If you do not start, you won't finish. Just like working out. You always say tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm busy today. I cannot work out. I did not have time to work out. And then time comes to work out. You feel sick or something happens. All right, I'm going to start on Friday. But once you start, it just catches. You keep working out every time. Right now, I do not want to damage the connector by applying hot air. So what we're going to do is use low melt solder, like the customer said in yesterday's video on his Benz key fob to use low melt solder. We did not use low melt solder on his fob because it was not needed, but we do need to use low melt solder here. I listen to customers, but not always. Fume extractor on. And we're going to apply low melt solder right over here, just like that. And I should be using a bigger tip for more heat transfer that will speed up the process. Because I noticed when my soldering iron tip was here, liquid metal, liquid metal, low melt solder did not liquefy here. It should. Low melt solder melts at a very low temperature. So even if I have my soldering iron here, this should liquefy. Watch. See, look at this. And finally, we're gonna apply Lomel solder here. And I think we should apply Lomel solder on those pinholes. But we're gonna use a smaller tip. Switching back between big tip and small tip. What can you do? Now all we have to do is apply a little bit of hot air and we should be able to completely desolder 
this connector. I mean, the connector was moving all over the place to begin with. So I do not know what's going on with the screw hole pins. Are they broken off? Are they just not making a good connection? We're going to find out. Look, the connector is completely moving. Just like that. And that bridge, or whatever you call it, tried to escape to the ninth dimension without success. It's too big. So that connector fell down and I cannot find it. And it has to be here somewhere. Unless it slipped right in my pocket. Where did that connector go? What the... It fell on the floor but it's not on the floor. Where did it go? Okay, I cannot find it. Let me go back to the video and see where that connector fell, or if I can tell how that connector fell. I mean, I was here, so it has to fall down like this. The connector escaped to the ninth dimension. We saved that bracket and we lost the connector. What are the chances? It fell. Wait a minute, is it possible that it fell in the nozzle? So I hit it up from the bottom. No, it's not in the nozzle. I did not find the connector. We're going to have to locate another connector. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the board. I just applied some flux and it looks like we have one missing pad right here. I cannot keep looking for this connector all day. So why don't we start by prepping the board? And if I found that connector later, we'll finish the video. Otherwise, we're going to have to locate another connector and solder it on this board. I just wanted to check the pins on that connector, the through hole pins. I wanted to see if they are good or not, but I did not have a chance. The whole connector was loose, so maybe the bottom pins were broken off. Fume extractor on. What can you do? Let's get rid of the glare. Just like that. So you see, look at this. I see broken pins from that connector. So that connector was not good anyway. That's a relief. We see all the broken pins. Look at this, the screw hole, screw hole, through hole pins. They're all broken here. Because how else would that connector be loose? If that connector was making a connection from the through hole pins, then that connector would not be loose. The pins are broken. All the connector pins are broken, or at least most of the connector pins. I see a pin stuck here also on the wick. Okay, so I do not even need to look for that connector anymore. Wow, we see a lot of pins. You see every through hole has a pin stuck inside. We're going to have to use hot air and a tweezer it looks like the pins of the surface mount are broken off and the through hole ones are broken off a combination 
I mean, how did that laptop charge with the customer? I do not understand. See, we have the pin broken off here. And how are we gonna get that pin out? And we have a pin broken here. What a mess. We're gonna have to flip the board, look from the back. And if we look at the back, maybe we can clean up a bit. Apply some flux. So this one is empty, this one is empty, this one is empty, very good, and very good. And we're all clean. Okay, so the board is ready to accept a new connector, but all we have to do is restore that microscopic trace right here. We're gonna order another connector. Hopefully we can find one. And then we can invoice and mail this back to the customer. But right now we need to zoom in a lot. And where's our magic grinding pen? That trace is so tiny. You cannot believe how tiny that trace is. I mean, what can we compare it to? Maybe a Sharpie? No. What can we compare it to? My flux needle? Look at this. Maybe we can compare it to my ultra fine multimeter probes, the same one we sell on our site. Look at this. That shows you how fine those multimeter probes are. We're gonna grab a pad strip, but before we do so, let's prep that trace. And of course, we cannot use that humongous tip. It looks humongous here because that trace is small. So maybe we should use the NF.mini pen right here. Just like that. Look at the quality on this microscope. Wow. Every time I work on this microscope, I get more amazed. This is the Northridge Fix microscope that you can purchase off our site. Just log into northridgefix.com, click on shop. You can buy this microscope along with the ring light, with the anti-glare light, hot air station, soldering station, multimeter, probes, power supply, charging station. And we are also a distributor of Genuine Antec Flux. Everything that you need, everything that we use on our bench here is sold in our shop. Everything is in stock. Just log in, add whatever you need to the shopping cart, check out, and we almost always ship out your order same day. If you notice, we do not advertise for others. We only advertise our products. We get hundreds of emails every day from companies that wants to advertise with us, whether it's 15 seconds or 30 seconds and some ask for a whole video it's like i'm gonna make one whole video 
advertising their product. They're going to send me an iPhone case. If you can make a video on that iPhone case, you can keep it. Wow. Impressive. This pad strip card is sticky. So when it's laying on the bench, it's going to collect all the debris, all the dust, all the dirt. And that's why it looks like this. See, it's sticky. I'm trying to decide if this pad strip is too big for this area. Maybe it's too big. We do not want this to bridge with this or this to bridge with this while we apply the connector. So maybe we can do the other end of this pad strip, which is narrower. This right here. Just like that. So we're going to clean in a downward motion. We do not want to do it upwards, so we do not break that pad strip that we just soldered. Beautiful. All we have to do is just prep the pads here because when we apply the new connector, we have to have solder on those pads. So those pads are ready to accept a new connector and then we can solder the rest of the pins, the through hole pins from the back. We are done. What we can do to finalize this repair since we cannot finish the repair today is apply solder mask onto that wire and just wait until we get that connector in stock and then we can finish the job for the customer. That was a very interesting video. Where did that connector go? That's the question. Maybe we should call this video. Why did that connector go? Or maybe we can call it ninth dimension at its finest. Let me know. What would you call this video? Like in the last video, I said soldering without flux is like fish without water. And a lot of you wrote some funny stuff. I read all the comments. Comments that I like, I keep. And the ones that are there to confuse others, I delete. And if somebody crosses the line, I just block that user. Easy. We keep this channel clean. And we're going to use our 10 watt equivalent UV lamp. You can also purchase this from our site. Everything that I'm using on the bench here, you can purchase off our site, including the UV mask, 10 watt equivalent UV lamp. It's going to shut off by itself after 20 seconds. If I want to go at it again, I press the button, another 20 seconds. The grinding pen, and I have both version 1 and version 2 of the grinding pen. Right now we sell version 2. We used to sell version 1. Like we had that customer that came in today, and he wanted to show me what he did to his board, how he soldered components on the board. So I told him that this is a place of business. If everybody want to come in and show me what he did and ask questions, then we do not work. We do not do anything all day. I share the information for free at my own time on YouTube, but we cannot allow this in the shop here. But since you came here, I'll take a look at the board. I went to check on the board and I saw a missing BGA chip with at least 47 missing pads. And that chip he did not solder on the board because he wanted to ask me if he can continue working on that board. I told him it's game over. You have a lot of missing pads on that BGA chip, the pads on the board, and it's game over. You cannot work on that board anymore. So he later said that he's not using a microscope. He did everything with his naked eye. And he does have a hot air station, a soldering station, and a lot of stuff, but he does not have a microscope. If you're not able to see properly, then you're not going to be able to do a good job. The number one tool that you should have on your list if you plan to do this as a hobby or profession is 
the microscope microscope along with the ring light and anti glare light once you are able to see everything so clear then everything else just takes practice and becomes easy but if you are trying to do the work and you are blind then you're not going to do a good job right i can zoom in look at this i mean you can see the texture on those microscopic pads and we can tell that we still have one pin stuck in the hole here you see right there oh it's gone okay so it's not soldered but it was stuck no problem once we get the connector and we put the connector here all the pins will push whatever is inside the holes here and the holes are clean we did check we can go over them one more time one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve then we have 13 14 15 2 4 6 8 10 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 then you have 25 26 27 28 28 joints that we need to solve that's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.